I want to learn a little bit about you. Um, uh, how many of you are Firefox users? All right, that's good to see. Uh, talk at places where we have not share. So how many web developers? All right, that's good too. Because that's mostly what this talk is about. Uh, okay, is that? Hello? Can you hear me now? Is that better? Okay. Um, so, so a lot of you are web developers. I wanted to ask how many of you are, um, are using Firefox 10, the latest version that just got released a few days ago? Okay, that's cool. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit about an interesting thing that, that I saw. So, so this is an article about Firefox 10 and pointing out that uh, there's some pretty interesting things that just happened uh, in our latest release. And uh, some major improvements to developer tools. Uh, if you just go to the tools menu, and you go to the web developer, there's a new inspector that's part of Firefox 10. So you can, uh, you can just, you can go around the page and you can inspect elements on any web page. All you have to do is just enable the toolbar and you can get information about how the web page is put together. And one other real cool thing is a 3D model of the web page. So here you can see all of the web, all of the divs in a 3D model. And you can go around and inspect each one of those divs to kind of figure out how the web page is put together. Um, one other cool thing that's not really useful is like you can look at the back side of the web page. So these are developer tools. They're developed in JavaScript. Um, some pretty amazing stuff. This is, a, this is an example of how HTML5 is getting used inside the browser. Some of the capabilities that are built into the browser are being used inside to do interesting things uh, and show interesting ways of representing data in the web page. Little screen. All right, so so we should get back to the talk, though. I just wanted to show you how many of you contribute to to Mozilla to the Mozilla project. So I'm going to try and change your mind. How many of you have 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 developed web pages using Firefox? All right. Well, we consider you all contributors. How many of people have helped other people to install Firefox on their machine? You've shared it with them. So. So, so participating in the Mozilla project is much broader than, than just writing C++ or JavaScript code into Firefox. It's all those different forms of participation. It's helping other users to use Firefox. It's, it's, it's believing in our mission and, and, um, and trying to help us build a better, better browser. And just by using it, you help, uh, help us build a better browser. This is a picture of... Uh, of the number of uh, Firefox users that are using Firefox every day in Brazil. And we're over, we're over 7 million people every single day using Firefox. And there, we don't have a marketing budget. We don't spend lots of time advertising. Um, and it's because of the efforts of you that have you sharing Firefox with your friends and your neighbors and your family that, we're, that, that we've had this amazing growth. And this growth is not so important, but, it, but it's the thing that allows us to influence companies like Microsoft and other browser vendors to do the right thing. When we can show that we've got 25% of the, of the entire internet using Firefox, we can, we can influence the direction of the web, and we, can, and we can be your voice in how the web will evolve. So all this influence is because of you. So the, today's talk is about HTML5 and how web standards evolve and, um, and, and, and how they're implemented in the browser. But first I'll talk a little bit about um, what HTML5 is not good for. 
So HTML5 is not a marketing differentiator between browsers. You've seen, you've seen Microsoft advertising HTML5 sites that work only with IE. Or, and you've seen Apple do the same thing. We don't believe that that's the right path. We want HTML5 features to work in all browsers. And that's, o that's only when we do that is the way that we're going to advance the web. So HTML5 is also not a, what I'll call a grand solution for the semantic web. If you look at the definition of the semantic web, you can look on Wikipedia or, or, or just do some. So the idea of semantic web is that um, uh, is, is to promote common formats, which is partly what HTML5 does. Um, and it, uh, and, but, the, uh, but the original idea of the semantic web was also to have the web so understandable that machines could operate on all the data that, that's, that's on the web. And, um, and, and somehow this would make all of our lives easier and better. Well, we can see that that's happening a little bit, but also if you look at the, this definition of the semantic web, you also see a number of problems that emerge. So, so there's the vastness of the web. There's 15 billion web pages on Earth, and they're all in slightly different formats. There's all this content that's not digestible between all of the browsers. So, so the, the vastness of the web and trying to understand everything that everyone puts on the web in all different languages, and it has a, a many different meanings. So, so just trying to get a handle on this uh, vastness is a, is a problem for the, for the, 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 the semantic web really hasn't addressed and is trying to solve in some way. So the semantic web also suffers from vagueness and uncertainty and inconsistency. Um, some of the content was developed before standards appeared. And so they're not compatible with, with the standards. And in some cases, they're not compatible across all browsers. So HTML5 is going to provide a little bit of help here. The other thing is this idea about security and privacy and that there's access to the web that, is, uh, that we want to be able to control to preserve your security and privacy. Um, and the, the, the researchers around the semantic web have not really focused There's, there's a lot of data about how people use the web, about all the metadata that's contained in the web, a lot of the um, information that comes, and that's locked up behind the firewall at Google. We need to figure out ways that we can open up some of that data and it can be shared so that, so that other, uh, other companies, other uh, individuals can, can use that data to understand more about how people use the web. So, so, there's, so those are the kind of the major areas that uh, HTML5 is not about. And I'll propose that HTML5 is really about building blocks. And they're about building blocks not for machines. They're about building blocks for trying to make a web that's easier for people to use. And I'll take the example of, of another web standard. Um, uh, that's in place now it, uh, called a HTML HTTP request. How many of you are familiar? If you're a web developer, you probably know a little bit about X XML HTTP request. Um, so this is the story of, of, of how that standard evolved many years ago and kind of explains how standards start to be integrated into the browser. So, so if you were if you were around, did you if you were around in using the web in uh, around in the late '90s? How many how many were using the web that long ago? So a few of us, okay. The most popular map website on the web at that time was called MapQuest. How many of you have ever visited MapQuest? Not too many people, but it, but this was the map site on the web. There wasn't any Google Maps at that time, and this was the most popular, and it was, it was kind of a, an amazing site to the people who had visited. You could go to that site, and you could get a map of anywhere in the world, and that just kind of blew people away that that, that was possible. And you can see how this site was designed. 
It had lots of information about how, how you could use their maps in your business. Uh, it, it, it had a bunch of online maps. It had driving directions. It had a travel guide. And they, and, but they had a hard time trying to figure out what their business model was going to be, how people were, were really going to use their site. And part of every single map and every single web page was this, was this button. And this button allowed you to navigate the maps. So if you wanted, to, if you brought up a, pic, uh, a picture of the map on your, in your web browser and you wanted to see another area outside, you had, to click on, you had to click on the button here. Or if you wanted to zoom in or out, you clicked on this middle button. And this was the navigation method that you used for navigating the maps. Um, and, but part of the problem in the design of the site was that every time you clicked one of those buttons, the entire web page reloaded. And so it was, it was very cumbersome and it was very slow because you were, you were reloading the entire map, the entire website, every time that you, that you made a navigation choice. So there, that site kind of remained static and that was the way that it ran for many, many years. So Google got interested in maps and, the, and improving that site and they had a bunch of uh, uh, some interesting ideas. But the first question that they ask is, what do users really want when they visit the site? And how are we going to provide that? Um, and so they went poking around, looking for different kinds of web technologies that they could use. And what they came up with was this idea of using XML HTTP request. And what that allowed is that you can load the web page and then you can write some JavaScript to go fetch more data. So they took that idea and they applied it to building maps.google.com. So you look at that, this is a pretty amazing transformation of a map site. You know, going, going from this early version to, to the Google version of maps. And the first thing that they did was like people, when they go to a map site, what do they want to look at? They want to look at a map. They don't want to look at the business model. They don't want to look at like how you can integrate maps into your business. They don't want to look at uh, these strange navigation buttons. They want to they want to see the map start loading. And um, and and so there was this amazing transformation of the site, um, and it quickly and so the so this site came out. This is one of the early versions of Google Maps. It came out in 2005, and they took advantage of XML HTTP request because it had been implemented in the browsers many years ago. And, they, they, and so all of the browsers that people were using, IE6, Netscape, and Mozilla at that time, all had XML HTTP requests, so they knew they, they could rely on that technology. But that technology never made it into a formal web standard. Still, they were able to use it and, and create an amazing site and a better user experience. And it, was, it, it took MapQuest another year and a half before they started um, uh, developing a site that had the same kind of capabilities as, as Maps at Google. And um, so here's a, you know, here's a picture from 2006 where that, this is the first version where they started using this ability to uh, put the mouse and drag your map around inside and have the map automatically update. So, so that's, a, that's a good example of, of standards being implemented in the browser. They start getting used by websites because the technology is all available there. And then the standards came along a few years later and formalized it into an official standard. And um, uh, that, that's how XML HTTP request came. So in, in using browser technology and, and using STIP um, uh, standards is, 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 you know, think about this, 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 this scenario that I just talked about. And, you know, don't get run over. Don't be the map quest. You know, don't have your site be the map quest. You need to continue to explore the technology that's available and figure out how you can use it to make your site better for users. 
And how many of you have played around with um, HTML5 demos? Have, have kind of taken a look at some content that's out there, tried to understand it, maybe integrated some of those ideas into your site. That's really the way that the web evolves. That's how it works. You learn by cutting and pasting and hacking stuff up. Uh, and, and another idea is to find a good mentor, mentor, and the other is to understand the landscape about where technology is and how you can take advantage of it. So, so one of the one, this idea that you can start to take advantage of technology before it reaches the standard state was uh, was was part of this XML HTTP request, uh, and but browser vendors have gotten a lot better at working together to, in, to, to implement some, some key pieces that we're mi missing as part of web browser technology. Uh, it didn't always work that way. It's like here's a quote from um, uh, the, the, the head of the IE browser uh, talking about like he wasn't interested in, in improving JavaScript performance before they started, uh, when they, after they started working on, on uh, IE again. Uh, and Microsoft it was kind of slow, but that's all changed now. And uh, JavaScript performance is, is important to Microsoft. It's important to all the browser vendors now. And it, but it always hasn't been that way. Um, we, in the early days of, of browsers, you had a lot of leapfrogging uh, where Netscape would do a feature, Microsoft would do a feature. Uh, and, and it was hard for web developers to track. Uh, there's still some of that going on. As I said, we're working much better. And you can go to several sites. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the W3C website, I think, uh, where you can look up and you can see what features are implemented in what browsers. So you can get a sense of what features that you can start to take advantage of to improve your site. And an amazing thing has happened just in the last year. So you've had uh, Firefox 4 released. You've had new versions of, of, of Opera. You've had new versions of Chrome and Safari. Um, and, so, and they all have a very rich body of technology of HTML5 that's been implemented new, and CSS3. So, so what we have out there now is, is a whole new set of browsers that have these uh, features. And, and I say that like, the next generation of browsers is here. You know, browsers that are faster and safer and easier to use. And it's really the largest set of building blocks that have been added to browsers in over 10 years. Um, like I said, we, back in the 90s, browsers evolved very fast. There were things like SSL and cookies and HTML4. There were all these technologies that w web developers could take advantage of. But around 2000, all of that ended when Microsoft got a monopoly on the browser. And IE, IE uh, 6 had about 98% market share. And Microsoft wasn't interested in, in improving that. So there, this is the long list of things that have been added to browsers in just the last year. There's open video. This is an interesting site that started to take advantage of open video. It's a documentary that someone has produced, and it's an open video documentary that has links and pulls in content from all over the internet as part of your viewing of the documentary. So they have some video that they show, and then the video might go out to Flickr to grab some images, or it might go out to Wikipedia to pull in another article. And so as you're, every time that you watch the video, you're getting slightly different content. And it's only through the use of open technologies and this interactive open video capability that you're able to create a site like that. So it's a whole new way of thinking about building content and, and having it be live and having it interact with, with other content that's out on the web. So SVG is another standard. Canvas. Geolocation. You can now create your website and you can ask the user for permission to get access to their location so you can provide them a better web experience. Multi-touch is another capability and that's mostly used on mobile devices now, uh, but, but increasingly we'll see it on laptops and, and desktop computers. 
accelerated graphics, offline web applications, drag, drag and drop file upload. For, for many years, you had to write a plugin if you wanted just to do a simple drag and drop for a file upload. Now you can do all that within a web page. Uh, you can, all, these web, all these slides that I'm using today are written in HTML5, and you can use CSS transitions like this page. There's things like universal subtitles. And there's uh, lots of improvements to web security. These are, th these are three features that have gone into Mozilla uh, called content security policy, strict transports, and do not track. So, so all of these additions that have gone into every single browser mean that we've, we've, we've kind of won the browser war. Developers have now have a much richer tool bag that they can use to develop websites with. And now it's really up to the web developers to decide how each one of these features is going to be used. You've got to think about ways that you can be like Google when they were developing the map site. You poke around in, in each one of these technologies, you figure out how, they can, how these building blocks can fit together. And another thing that you can do is you can find good sources of information that you can rely on. The Mozilla Developer Network is one of these, and we're, it's an open wiki. Anyone can contribute to it, and we're trying to gather as much information as we can about each one of the capabilities in CSS3 and HTML5 and all these different web technologies and have it be a central place where we can build some really good documentation that explains how these capabilities are used. We've also got a number of evangelists working at Mozilla now that that's their job every single day is to create these demos, these amazing ways that you can use HTML5. Uh, Christian Heilman is one, Paul Roger is another. And you can, you can see the amazing demos if you just do a, if you Twitter or you search for those guys. You can see some of the amazing work that they're done to show how HTML5 can be used in web pages. But, it's, but again, it's up to you. Like tear the, you know, take a look at these demos. Uh, take them apart, figure out how they work, and hack on them. So that's, uh, that's all I wanted to talk. We can take a few questions. Um, uh, if you tweet to uh, De Todos Para Todos, that's the current campaign that we're using to get community people involved. If you've got ideas about demos, if you want to share them on the, uh, our Hacks uh, website, uh, we're, we're interested in any way that you want to get involved with the Mozilla project. So thank you very much for coming, and then we can take a few questions. Maybe. Hello there. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I I've seen the, the browser development over the years as a user I'm, for many years ago, and now I'm a developer. And I'm not really sure, I'm pretty sure if, it's, if it's safe to use the CSS3 and HTML, HTML5 features now, right. uh, or it's safe or not, I don't know that. Right. Because I have an e-learning platform that I'm developing that uses HTML5 video tag. Right. and integrated the video with slides and when the video changed the, the time, the slides changed and subtitles and things like that. But I don't know if it's safe to continue using the uh, HTML5 or I may, uh, may make a flash look alike. I don't know. Uh, right. I want to know that. Right. Yeah. So, um, so this one slide that I showed, uh, this is like, I think this is the W3C school site and it shows um, what features, what, what CSS3 uh, features or what HTML5 features um, have been implemented in which browsers. And if it's been implemented in Firefox and uh, NIE and Chrome and Safari and Opera, and, um, and you've test, and that's the first indication that, that that technology is probably ready for you to use. Uh, the second thing is, is to take a, a quick look at each of those browsers and figuring out if, if what you're trying to do 
um, has any bugs in any of the browsers. And if you're able to go through and write a test case um, and, and run, run that test case against all the browsers and it works pretty good, I, your chances of being able to use it right now are pretty good. Even though you know, a lot of the HTML5 standards have not been finalized yet. It, it, the standards process is very slow. And part of it is because the browser vendors like to lose lots of discussion. They, the browser vendors actually lose interest. Like once they've implemented and they've, they've done it, it it's, it's hard to get people to come together to finalize the standard. It's just a lot of extra paperwork. People don't have time. They want to go off and implement some of the new features. But if you, can, if you can test the feature that you want and make sure it works good in two or three browsers, there, that's the indication that you're probably going to be successful and you can go ahead. That was the case with Google Maps and, and Google choosing to use XML HTTP request even though the standard hasn't been finalized. Uh, hi. Uh, why uh, don't those, those work uh, HTML tag, HTML5 tag audio Audio in in the in the Firefox 10 e, e, in the type in the type audio e, MP3. Why does it work? Can somebody repeat? Can somebody repeat in English? Uh, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the, the audio tag has not been implemented on all the browsers yet, and I'm not sure if it, if it supports MP3 or not. Um, I think that mostly probably depends on codecs, right? And, um, and So Fabricio is a member of the Mozilla community, and he works... He works a lot with, with audio and video, and he probably has a better answer than I do to this question. É, não sei se entendi sua pergunta. Você perguntou sobre a tag audio e se o Firefox suporta MP3, é isso? Não, o Firefox não suporta MP3. Ele suporta codecs abertos de áudio, que são o OG e o, o, o Web, é, WebM também. Você pode usar. E ele, eu acho que ele usa o, o vo, é, vo, Voxes. É, não, o log, sim. É que tem um outro que é para speech, né? Mas, respondendo a pergunta, MP3 não porque é proprietário. Você pode fazer um fallback para Flash, que suporta MP3, para outros browsers. Mas eu recomendo que você codifique com o log ou com o IBM também. Excuse me. Matheus, here, want to know what more than simple web pages we can do with HTML5? Uh, what, can, you, can you repeat? What more can... Can we do with HTML5 than uh, simple web pages and games? Ah, okay. So, so HTML5 is trying to allow you to do all the things that you can do now with native code. Uh, in the browser, in a web page, and trying to find ways to simplify the, um, how you write applications so that you, can, so that you can write them in a web page rather than having to write them in C++ or other programming language. You can use JavaScript and CSS and the audio tag and video tag. You can use all those capabilities. We have a, a, another project now that we're um, we're taking every single uh, component of mobile phones and we're trying to figure out a way that we can allow you as, a, as an application developer to get access to those, those things within a web page so that you can get access to answering the telephone or you can get access to uh, the, ge uh, uh, the geolocation or, um, or, or the gyroscopes. Um, any, any piece of technology is, is, is going to be controllable by a web page. So you, you can, if you're all web developers, you'll be able to, to, um, to, to write a web page that is an application that runs on the phone.
Good night. Uh, why does Mozilla wait so so much to release a good uh, HTML inspector? Uh, I know Firebug and it's an awesome one. Yeah, um, we we know that we 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 were slow in developing web developer tools. Uh, Firebug was kind of a community project, but now we have a. I think we have like 10 people working on developer tools, and you just saw like that eight, the um, that uh, web page inspector uh, that just got released in Firefox 10. So they're starting to figure out ways that they can improve the developer tools, and we're making progress fast, and we're trying to catch up. Uh, we know that we it, it, we had lagged for a long time. Here. É, eu vou fazer a pergunta em português e ele vai falar em inglês aí. <risos> I will translate his question. É o seguinte, é, é, recentemente eu estava trabalhando com algumas coisas em HTML5 usando SQLite para poder fazer algumas aplicações offline. É, só que aí agora o W3C falou que é meio, é, não é recomendado, eles meio que é, descontinuaram e recomendam um outro padrão. E aí, assim, é, eu queria saber, por curiosidade, é, por que, é, qual que seria a influência da Mozilla e da, da comunidade open source para ajudar a criar os padrões, entendeu? É, qual que seria mais ou menos, mais ou menos isso? Posso ou não? Bruno, uh, his question is about uh, offline data storage. It used to be SQL, uh, SQLite, right? for offline data storage and and now it's deprecated and we're using something else uh, i believe that store i don't know the exactly name of the yeah. offline database that is the recommended today but index the bit db yeah so uh bruno uh based on this change he he's curious to know uh how where Two, uh, th two or three things. Where these discussions are taking place, um, how Mozilla is participating on that, and how can we participate on that? Uh, did I summarize the right? Okay. Yeah. So, so there's quite a there. Uh, there's a Mo Mozilla hierarchy of news groups and uh, dev platform. Mozilla Dev Platform in uh, uh, News Group is the place where the Mozilla discussions are going on about, about that. Um, and then um, all, of the Mozilla, or all of the web browser developers um, have quite a few discussions in standards bodies groups. There, a lot of them are participants in the standards bodies and, and talk in the W3C or, or what WG groups. Um, the reason for this change is that, that uh, SQLite, we ran into lots of performance and stability program, uh, problems that, that we couldn't resolve. Um, and, and, and so that was what drove looking for a different solution and, um, and, and the change. Uh, some slides before, you talked about browser wars. Uh, so I think, uh, honestly, is my opinion, that Mozilla is always trying to be in the top of this browser war. So I want to, I want to know what motivates Mozilla, what your politics about it, why Mozilla is always trying to be on the top. Right. So, so the, the thing that we really think is important in Mozilla is that, that some browser development group has to be an advocate for the users. Someone has to be representing their interest. And all of the other browser vendors are representing the interest of their company and their shareholders. And so that, that, that slightly changes the perspective when you're looking at features. They're trying to build businesses to make money. Mozilla is trying to build a browser that allows users to stay in control. And that's, that's our mission at the Mozilla Foundation. And, and something that everyone that gets hired there, everyone that participates on the project believes in absolutely. Um, and in many cases, it really doesn't matter. Um, the, the, the motivations are the same. Like ultimately, for, for commercial companies that develop browser, like they, they ultimately have to provide a good enough web experience 
um, that that users are going to pick their browser. They're gonna, they have to make it fast enough. They have to make it secure enough. They have to make it compatible with web pages. Like if it doesn't have those things, then people aren't going to use it. But there, but there are certain there are certain things where privacy matters. Privacy matters a lot more to us than it does to Google. Google is interested in capturing your data. That's how they're building their business. They are only successful if they know a lot about you and they tune their results and they're able to sell ads based on that. Um, uh, you know, Apple is uh, Apple has a business model where they want to keep you captive within their services. They want to they want you to only visit iTunes and buy music off the iTunes site. You know, we don't we don't we don't have that kind of uh, driving motivation at Mozilla. So we want to see many stores across the internet where you could buy music. We want to see you be able to take your music from one place to another. And that's why we've, 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 we started to work on our apps project and we started to work on many services that will, that will extend the way. That's the new battleground uh, in the years to come. Um, it's not just about, you know, back, back in the, early, the first version of the browser war, we were very concerned about Microsoft um, bringing the browser into the operating system. But it's a lot more than that now. It's not only bringing the browser into the operating system, it's tying it to the device. You know, Apple controls the hardware. They control the operating system, they control the browser, they control the web services that you visit. And, and that amount of control is, 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 um, is dangerous to the way that the web has worked. And so we have to, we, the battle is expanded to all those different areas. And Mozilla is getting involved in developing solutions at each one of those layers. I want to have a question too. Here, here. Uh, you told about the the relationships between the the brands and the browsers that they do, uh, and we know that uh, Google is a uh, give a, a bunch of money to Mozilla to uh, keep their search engine default. What's uh, what's this kind of relationship between Mozilla and Google affect the development? of Firefox? Uh, it, it, it upsets Google often in some of the things that we do, in some of the things that we say. But we have a lot of independence. We, there are no ties between the money that they contribute to the project and what we do. We provide a service to them. Um, just, just to get an idea, what's, your, what's the most popular search engine that everyone here uses? Is it Google? How many people use Bing? I mean, that's the second one. Like no one uses. So Google is this is still the strongest search engine, and we provide a lot of value because the the search box that that's in the Mozilla browser, or it's in Firefox, uh, gets Google search results for you, and Google makes a lot of money off of that. And the money that they contribute to the project is a way of them compensating us, uh, supporting us because we give them a lot of uh, business. But, but we, what we're very, very careful in making sure that as they give us money to do the things that we think are important, it has no strings attached. And, um, and, 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 and that relationship has worked out very well. It's strictly a business relationship where there's, we're providing them a service they're compensating us for us, but they don't influence the way that we think about the browser and the and the things that we think are important. Here, question here, please. Uh, I want to know because I work in a website that is already in HTML4, and my client said it's if, if safe to rewrite the site in HTML5 because we have a lot of. JavaScript animation and a lot of uh, XML, HTML requests and things like that. So the client asked me that, and I don't know the answer. So okay, yeah, I, I think the the better thing to do is to find out what they want to do on the site rather than picking which technology. If there's something that they're trying to do that they can't do now, 
then that's where you should go look at HTML5 and figure out, is there some new feature in HTML5 that you can use to do what they want to do? And that's the way to keep the conversation moving, rather than just picking technology. I think that, 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 uh, that process of companies just trying to say, picking the technology and then deciding how they're going to build the site it, uh, had many bad effects in the early days of the browser wars. People just decided they're going to pick VBScript or they're going to pick ActiveX and they're going to use that technology and without thinking about, well, is it going to be supported in the long term from Microsoft or other browser makers? Uh, they just made a, a, a technology choice before they made a choice about what they want what, what they wanted their application to do. And I think you have to do it the reverse way. You think that today there's a, a safe way to, to do some HTML requests like Ajax or... Because you, you can pick those, those data in, in the transfer. So you think there's a, sinful, a safe way to do this today? Um, I don't know that it, it, you know if there are security bugs, then security researchers usually find them. And XML HTTP requests has been pretty immune to to researchers finding a way to abuse that. So I think that's actually pretty pretty safe still. Yeah. Um, uh, in the past, if I want, in the past, uh, for example, if I want to do a cool file upload, I had to use Flash. Uh, HTML5 has API for that. Right. If I want to show a video, I had to use Flash. Now HTML5 has, has an API for uh, for that too. Right. So, do you th do you think Flash for web is really dying? Is really over? Uh, well, a lot of the building blocks are there now. That's the first step. Is that most of the browser vendors have to implement a, a way that you can that an application developer could replace it. So in video, I think we're pretty good. Uh, the other thing that people use Flash for is games. I think that, I mean, some of the bare bones are there, but there's still lots of work that for a game developer to decide, like, should I use Flash or should I use HTML5? They can probably try, and we're encouraging them to do so, but it's probably not, it's not probably not fast enough, and probably doesn't, you know, there's still, there's still bugs that we need to work out. So that's a little bit further away. And then there's you know a, a number a long tail of other things that people use Flash for. I, those those won't be so important. You know it's just it's mostly video and games. And uh, I think we've made a good start at solving both of those problems. And then the next step will be for sites to convert. So so YouTube is doing a pretty good job of converting everything over so that the browsers that support open video, you know don't don't rely on Flash anymore. And you know, Google is interested in getting rid of Flash. The, the problem with Flash is the same problem that we had with IE6. You know, Adobe cannot make any money off of distributing Flash anymore. There's no, there's no business model there. So there's no incentive for them con to continue to invest in it. Um, and so Flash, com you know, it, it's not competing anymore. So it's going it, to, like, if the browser vendors stay focused on improving what we have there now, and if we get Microsoft to implement open video, the, the, you know, that's, that's the last kind of hurdle. I have another question. I think the, the other fellow can, can answer that for me. Uh, sobre formato de vídeo, cara, como é que vocês estão na conversa para chegar no acordo? Não. É, você sabe responder, porque, por exemplo, é... O Google Chrome usa WebM, o Firefox usa OGG, só que não usa outro formato. Enfim, mas não, os, quatro, os quatro não tem um formato padrão ainda. Como é que está essa conversa? Vocês sabem me dizer algo? É, sobre como está a conversa, eu não sei te dizer, mas talvez ele saiba, então vou repassar a pergunta. <risos> so, uh, he's asking about the video codex. So Firefox and, and, and Chrome, they support WebM, while IE and uh, Safari and uh, mobile Safari does not. So uh, he wants to know if, if there are ongoing negotiations and how they are 
uh, if they are having any progress at all. I don't know. So we're we're encouraging, you know, Microsoft and Apple to implement open video. Like we're we're really trying hard to say like you've got to do this. And I think they're they're also they also want to get rid of Flash, and so that that will be the turning point. Like there's a certain amount of legal hurdles that they're you know in the licensing that they're worried about. Like they just have to get over that and move forward. Momenti. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Oh, wait, is there one more? No. Oh, okay. So I mentioned earlier about this idea that, like, it's if you're trying to understand HTML5 and web technologies, it's really good to find a mentor. And probably, like, the best two mentors that you have here in Brazil are in the audience. Fabricio and Marcio, why don't you guys stand up? And Clobber? So, so Fabricio and Marcio, uh, Marcio used to work back at Netscape with me back in, you know, 2000. So he's been using the web for a long time. And he's one of these guys that, like, he just, like, dives into websites and tears them apart figure out how they how they operate and figure out how he can use it in for his own application Tem mais alguma pergunta, pessoal? vou tentar falar em inglês, eu tenho um pouco, sei lá, talvez eu trave. with with uh, Android and uh, mobile devs, smartphones, um, we see, uh, I think that uh, the future, in the future, um, the browser will be the uh, OS, something like that. Uh, and um, I think, I figure out uh, if, if Mozilla uh, is doing something uh, with, with, uh, with the, this line, uh, sorry for yeah. the English. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> So yes, we do have a project. It's called Boot to Gecko or Boot to Web, and the idea is that um, is that we'll take an operating system kernel and we'll we'll make it so that when it boots up, you're loading a web page, and that's the web page will be your user interface. Um, and we're starting to experiment, looking for partners, and the idea is that like we'll create that a system that will run on. Um, a variety of phones and um, that's the idea it's like if we want to do this we have to be able to have web interfaces to to all of the all of the hardware that's in that's in the phone so it's 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 gonna take a couple of years it's gonna be a longer term project but we want to we want to open up um, we want to open up a web page and be able to take advantage of, of anything on the devices Mais alguma pergunta, gente? Vou passar aqui para para Tá pode falar. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's a there's a Mozilla table over there uh, what? Uh, a Mozilla, a comunidade da Mozilla tem uma bancada é, bem é, no meio entre a arena de software livre e de rede de segurança, a gente está junto com a comunidade da Wikimedia e, a, e o Garou Hacker Club e quem quiser aprender a fazer extensões ou saber um pouco mais de como contribuir para Mozilla, mesmo não sendo desenvolvedor, dá um pulinho lá, o Fabrício vai dar lá, o Márcio vai dar um pouquinho, mas tem o Clauber, tem o Ricardo Pontes, enfim, todos muito bem-vindos. Thank you very much for coming out.